Have you ever wondered how collision detection works in games? We're going to start with the simplest case and then work our way towards creating a small game that resembles Flappy Bird. This problem can be quite complex depending on the complexity of your simulation or game. For example, it depends on the properties of the objects, the number of objects, and whether it is 2D or 3D game. Let's look at the simplest case. Imagine a 2D game where you want to detect if a circle hits a wall. We can draw the walls like this, aligned to the axis. This is called axis aligned. This property means that the straight lines are parallel to the axis. Uh, this is a simplification so that it is easier for us to compute collisions. First, let's look at the vertical walls and then derive for the horizontal walls. A vertical wall means a vertical line at x equals c1. Let's consider the case where the circle is moving from right to left and the center of the circle is x1, y1 with a radius of r. As you can imagine, the circle touches the wall when x1 minus r equals c1. Now, depending on the speed of the circle, you may update its position by some step value. So the condition we must look for is that x1 minus r less than or equal to c1. Here the r and the c1 are constants. So our condition to check would be x1 less than or equal to c1 plus r. That's simple enough. Let's take a look at the case where the circle is moving from left to right and the wall is on the right side. So then, similar to the above, we have a wall at x equals c2. The circle will touch the right wall when x1 plus r equals c2. So the condition to check would be x1 plus r greater than or equal to c2, which becomes x1 greater than or equal to c2 minus r. Similar to this, we can quickly derive the horizontal walls. y1 less than or equal to c3 plus r, y1 greater than or equal to c4 minus r. So putting together everything we have right now, we get four inequalities. x1 less than or equal to c1 plus r, x1 greater than or equal to c2 minus r, y1 less than or equal to c3 plus r, y1 greater than or equal to c4 minus r. So these are the conditions you have to check at each update of the position of the circle x1, y1. Great, so let's take a look at the code, how this is implemented. Here's the class that implements an object. It has these properties, position, velocity, and radius. Then in init state, we create an object and initialize it. As you can see, we give the object horizontal and vertical velocities of 1. Then we create a rect representing the walls. Here we create a timer and at each tick, we update the object position by adding the velocity. Then comes the collision detection. Each of these conditionals are what we derived earlier. They check if the object had collided with right, left, bottom and top walls. If they have, the corresponding velocity is inverted. Ok great, here's how it looks like. Now let's remove one of these conditions and see the effect. Let's uh, remove the bottom wall, collision check. As you can see the ball goes right through it. And another one, this time the right wall. Yep, nice. Great, so that's simple enough. Let's consider a case where our objects are rectangles. So let's draw two rectangles. Uh, they are identified by top left and right bottom points. So these two rectangles can have four possible arrangements. Let's consider one by one. Here the case where rect 2 moves northeast direction relative to rect 1. Mind you, in our coordinate system, the y increases southwards. First, let's check if the right edge of the rect 2 touches the vertical bounds of the rect 1. 
we can come up with this inequality that if R2 is larger than or equal to L1 and also smaller than or equal to R1, then this could be a collision. Now we have to check the top edge of Rec2. Similar to previous reasoning, if the top edge of Rec2 touches or beyond B1 to the north but below T1, then we can say that Rec2 had collided with Rec1. So now let's look at the scenario where Rec2 moves southeast direction relative to Rec1. Let's focus on the bottom edge of the Rec2, which means that if B2 is larger than T1 but less than B1, then this could be a collision. We should also look at the right edge of R2. That is exactly as before. So R2 must be between R1 and L1. If both these conditions are met, then we can say that Rec2 will collide with Rec1. Now we can consider the scenario where Rec2 moves northwest direction relative to Rec1, which means that if L2 is between L1 and R1 and T2 is between T1 and B1, then this is a collision. Similarly, we can quickly look at the scenario where Rec2 moves southwest direction relative to Rec2, uh, Rec1. Just as before, if B2 is between B1 and T1 and L2 is between L1 and R1, then this is a collision. So we came up with all these scenarios that can cause a collision. You may already see that some of these conditions are redundant, but we can optimize these things when we get to the code. Okay, let's jump to the code now. Here's what it looks like. Whoa, that's a fluke. I'm crappy at this normally. Imagine if you will, the green box is the bird we control by tapping on the screen and the red boxes are obviously walls. So here I've defined the bird object. It has these properties, a position, velocity, acceleration. I will get to that later. Uh, and a rect which describes the bounds of the bird and the flag to say if it's dead or alive. On the init state as before, I've created uh, the list of walls. Currently I have only two. Then I create a new bird, give it a, an initial position, a velocity, acceleration of zero. This acceleration is what changes when we tap on the screen. And now let's look at the timer tick update. There I update the bird position by adding velocity. Then I update the velocity by adding the acceleration and gravity. Acceleration is upwards and against the gravity. Then I reduce the acceleration by a small amount here and clamp the values to minimum of zero. Here the acceleration is negative, so adding a small amount means it is decaying. Then I check for collisions of each wall. Optimization can be made here, but I haven't. Uh, and if the bird had collided, then I set the vertical velocity to five and the horizontal to zero. This gives the dead bird falling effect. Then I have the reset game routine if the bird goes out of the screen bounds. Now let's look at the collision detection function. Here are the eight checks we discussed earlier uh, implemented as you can see. Some of these checks are redundant, so let's remove them. Now let's give it a go again. Still works as expected, so this is a small tour of collision detection. 
the subject is vast and quite complex when the objects have complex shapes and the environment is complex. Um, in multiplayer games like Call of Duty or Fortnite, it can be mind-bogglingly complex. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. As always, if you like what I create, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Until next time.